I don't think I need a roll call. Do I have proof of notification? You need to use your. Oh, well, yes. Barb told me that. Barb, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Do you have proof of notification? Yes. By the way, everybody should use their mic so Barb can hear. <laughs> okay. Uh, Adam, did you say yes? Yeah, we're okay. Mm -hmm. It was on the website. Okay. Do I have approval of the minutes from October 10th? Did everybody get a chance to read those? Any questions? Do I have a motion to? Oh, um. Okay, Chad moves to accept the minutes and Ingrid Gossmer seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, the first thing we have is the food service. And we're just going to, um, I asked, I said that she didn't, in December, she's going to come and do a complete, because she's had her two months or so then, and really talk about everything that she's up to. By the way, I think you can still order your pie in the next hour if you need to. <laughs> and um, so the food service revenues were 20,703.97, and the expenditures were 12,000. O thirteen fifty five. So they had a plus of eight thousand dollars this month. Yeah. So that's a wonderful switch round, and we hope that they'll do more. So all the uh, expenditures are written on here. Do I have a motion to approve the expenditures? I'll make a motion. Okay, Barb goes, makes a motion. Dan McGuire seconds it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, post. Okay, motion carries. Okay. Adam, you want to start with the egg extension? Yes. Adam. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got to talk because Barb said she has a hard time hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, better? That's better, thank you. All right, so first of all, for the extension office accounts, um, we had leasing, Gordon Flash, Genuine Telecom, uh, office supplies. Uh, we had some agent mileages in here for a total of uh, $1,112.54. And then we had program accounts. Uh, then these are our out of our non lapsing accounts uh, we had for general plan ahead programs for Chelsea for a total of 128.03. And those are all the accounts that we had for expenditures this month. Any questions for Adam? All in favor of the motion to or, or, do I have a motion to pay the expenditures? Chad Gazwell moves. Second by Dan McGuire. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Do you have anything else for your update at all, Adam? Okay. Um, I I don't know where Sean is, and I thought he should be here for some of this. So, what? Well, get in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to wait too much longer. Um, I'm skipping around on some things and I, I think I'm going to wait for Mike on this next one too. I know they're coming because they called me. Um, if he was right outside, come on. Well, instead of going in depth on it, I'll go to number eight about the economic impact reports. By the way, Clinton, I thought Marty was going to be here. Okay. Uh, did everybody get a chance to read those? Yes. Do you have any questions or understand that they the campus does has had a huge financial positive impact to the community? 
So I think that's something that we need to balance when we're thinking about other things, whether we're dismantling or whatever, uh, how we're trying to have economic development and we've had great economic development from that. John, Mike, er, John, did you see Sean? No, it probably is. He said he was going to do some work things. Okay. Anything else about the impact that anybody would like to discuss? Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, did the Richland Economic Development Committee see this report at all? Um, not from me. I did give it to Marty Brewer about two, three weeks ago. I don't know if he presented it or not. I'll have to ask him. So I can uh, forward that to uh, Jason and Mar ask Marty to do that too. Yeah, it's really quite important, I think, that they see this too as opposed to just us. Okay. And Mike's on his way? Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted him here for the roof proposal and what he was doing. It's a little hard to keep moving without Mike at this moment. Um, is there anything else you can, I really think all these, we need Michael and thank you everybody else for being here promptly. I think what we'll do is when, as soon as Michael gets here, we're going to move to the copper top roof proposal on number 11. Oh, yeah. yeah I think I, I found it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry, but I'm here. Yeah. Okay. In this minute, I can't find my proper top. Here it is. Well, maybe Clinton. Um, we're starting to need Michael to explain this. Do you want to talk about the copper top roof proposal? Yeah. Okay, so in your packet, you'll see the last item in there is an overlay for the different roofing projects. Um, estimates that came back through Russ Moans, uh, through Strategic Engineering Group out of Madison, who has handled a lot of our roof projects. You're probably familiar with Russ. I'm not sure she can hear you because I can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Now? Good. Barb, yeah. can you hear? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Um, in your packet, you have uh, the last item in there. You'll see a, a Wallace Hall, I think, overlay type of a, a roof plan with estimates. Um, so it has in there, you're, you're looking at uh, the different sections of the roof. The flat ones are the ones that have the little bit of a, the red boxes in there, sections six, seven, eight, nine, and then the center one of one. Uh, and then 10 is the separate ventilation pieces around, I believe the fire dampers over the stages. So these are the estimates that came back from Russ Moans. Again, this is not specified and put out to actual contractors for the bids, it's an estimate um, coming in at the different sections for the different costs. The total estimated cost to replace all the flat sections on copper top, 270000 I know our, our leaks and our problems are predominantly right now centered around section 10 within section 1 in that middle section. Uh, loose conversations that I've had with Chair Gentis and then with Dr. Compton have been to potentially then work with Russ on prioritizing that center section. 
and seeing what can be done underneath the $100,000 that we have in the capital improvement budget, if that sounds correct, Madam Chair. Yes, Mike, we, we're moving around. We started with the roof thing, so. Uh, um. So, so that was my question, even looking at this, I wasn't quite sure. Is the copper top is 10, right? So it's that whole uh, middle section for 150,000? Correct, yep, that's what I'm gathering is the, well, the one and 10, so you're, you're visualizing that middle rectangle. Yeah, including, one and 10. Including then around the, the dampers or the fire uh, vents, I forget the correct name of them. Um, all that together is estimated again at 150,000. And if you remember, we voted to have a hundred thousand from capital borrowing for this project. Correct. In the capital right. plan right now is a hundred thousand yeah. that is allocated so towards. Be, um, and I assume they can't do this till spring, right? Because of the weather. Uh, I would assume that this would yeah. be a spring project. The sooner we get it kind of firmed up on what we want to do, we can have specification design established through Russ, and then uh, try to get on folks' schedule earlier than later in the in the construction months. Hey. <laughs> so um, I think we we had an informal, but so this is your what you guys think is that we can't afford to do all of it at once because it's way more than what we expected the bid might be or with proposal. So I don't I haven't talked to the foundation who had said that they would pay partial of money to us. I guess I was thinking we should only do one in 10 because I wasn't quite sure on here which was the actual copper top from looking at this and ask them if they would contribute 50,000 toward that. Any other thoughts on that? Michael, do you know where we're at on that one in 10? It, you know, on here, is that the copper top? It, okay. Anybody want to make a comment? <laughs> if that's what you're comfortable with, I perhaps a motion to the extent of uh, to give guidance to administration and working with SEG engineering to create specification design uh, to prioritize on sections 110 underneath financial limits, something of that nature. Sorry, Adam, that was quite a bit there. <laughs> make that motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. Okay, Bar Voice seconds it. Okay, so obviously we have to figure out the other fifty thousand um, if we if it comes in at that. He said he didn't know exactly what it would be, but we can go ahead and do the specifications, and then we can see how much it actually is going to be. I think, and I I guess I can try to talk to Terry Sobranik and. Um, and see if there if this is a project that they would be interested in, since they wanted to make sure that they felt comfortable with the project. Does that seem amenable to the rest of you? I'll yes. work with Russ then and making sure that it's kind of uh, specification designed in sections again, as well. Okay. Okay. So, any other discussion? Dan, nope. it's a building thing you might know about. No. Okay. All in favor of going ahead with doing the specifications, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, so uh, Adam, do you have sort of what we're gonna say there? So we're good with that, Dr. Compton. Okay, I told you I'm going out of order. Uh, my, my plan is um, to do uh, seven, eight, and nine maybe after we do the closed session. And right now I thought we, since Tracy's a very busy person, we'll have Tracy do her presentation and you do yours. Is that okay in that order from your point of view? Okay, I mean, okay. Go ahead.
I didn't know if that was out of sync with your purview. Okay. All right, Tracy, you want to see, you're going to need a microphone. So I think all of you know Tracy Gobin. This is number um, 12 on our agenda. And Tracy is the director of the Simons Recreation Complex, and she has some thoughts about the part of the campus. So um, Simons Recreation Complex is just across from the, that's on campus, so straight across from the gymnasium. Back in, I think it was 2019, um, Simon's looked at doing an addition. We did some listening sessions, and uh, the big point of the addition was to get family changing rooms into the facility because we don't have those right now. We just have men's locker rooms and women's locker rooms, and so it's hard when you have dads bringing little girls or moms bringing little boys and having to send them in, or older adults who are caring for their spouse and where do they go to help change them to go into the swimming pool. So that was kind of what started our thoughts on the addition. And, and so then we, we had planned at one point in time to do a building addition out the back of Simons with a full-size gymnasium. And so the idea behind the listening sessions in our addition was to get the much needed family changing room. And then also instead of building a gymnasium, there was a gymnasium just across the way. So um, we looked at putting an addition to connect Simon Center to the UW Platteville Richland Gymnasium. Um, so that kind of started back in 2019. We did a bunch of listening sessions um, for that. Um, and so as as we have not been able to raise the money and funds to do that addition through the Simons Foundation, hasn't um, been able to do that. So that kind of put on hold. Um, so I had been talking um, with Dr. Compton about the potential of Simons maybe using the gymnasium now, managing the gymnasium, um, and doing different activities in there. I have to say, I don't have a full tight plan. I don't know um, the direction it took here too is that Simon's looking at how it would take over the gymnasium. So paying all the bills it sounded like and everything. I haven't seen any electrical bills, any, well, I've seen a couple months of water bills, um, but I don't know like a whole year of how much the building would cost. So I don't really know for the question I know that'll come up, can Simon's afford to take on the gymnasium? That I don't know. Um, on, I don't have that all the details and information to do that. Uh, but the things that we had talked about was what we'd be looking at Simon's being able to do with the gymnasium is opening it up so Simon's members would be able to walk in the gymnasium 24-7. They'd be able to play basketball in there 24-7. It would also then open it up to the college students to do the same thing. They'd be able to get key fobs walk in the gymnasium, play basketball in the gymnasium as well, looking at how we could help to support the campus as well at the same time. So making sure that there was banners or posters inside the gymnasium, advertising UW, UW Platteville Richland to help encourage folks to attend. So the kind of the idea was not only would the college students be using it, but members of the public and community would be using it as well to hopefully help promote UW Platteville Richland to help with the you know, folks coming in and seeing how nice the campus is and what a great place it is to start their education. So kind of looking at it that way. Um, and then with Simon's managing it versus the campus managing it, and Dr. Compton could explain this a little bit better, but the campus has um, way more rules that they have to follow for if they were going to host like a basketball tournament or um, coaching sessions in the gymnasium for one-on-one -on -one basketball or workshops or camps and those kind of things. So much harder for them to be able to do those kind of things where we'd be looking at that'd be something Simons could do potentially in the gymnasium is hold workshops or camps for basketball or volleyball. You know, we could have time set up for folks to not only just play basketball in the gym, but play volleyball. Pickleball is very large. We have a lot of folks that come in and use pickleball. You can put up temporary courts, have you know certain days of the week for certain different things. So to bring in more people into the gymnasium kind of and helping to promote Simons, obviously, but then also UW Platteville Richland too. So um, that's kind of our, our focus. There'd be different, um, you know, options like we've um, had yoga classes in the gymnasium in the past just because it's quieter in there um, versus off of our land aerobics room is right off of our fitness room. So there's noise and, and when you're, if you've ever done yoga, most people like it quiet in the yoga room with nice uh, 
sounds, soothing sounds, instead of hearing weights clanking or people running on a treadmill isn't quite as at the atmosphere that folks look for for those types of classes. So that's kind of in general kind of the theme that Simons would be looking at um, being able to use the, the gymnasium of, I guess, um, Linda had asked if I would come in and speak today and kind of give my idea of what um, Simons would be looking at using the gym for. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any specific questions for me or ideas or anything. Yeah, anyone have questions for Tracy? Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for the presentation. Um, when you were talking about the family locker rooms, are you saying then that those would be located in the current gymnasium and then connected or is so, that separate? So that would be, so our current, at Simon's, our current lobby where we have our receptionist desk now, those would become family changing rooms in our lobby if the building addition would t were to happen. Our current lobby becomes family changing rooms and then the lobby is actually then outside the front door right now, but it would be enclosed in the, in the addition. So then the lobby would be in that connecting area that's currently garden and sidewalk and lawn between Simons and the campus gym. There would be a lobby in that area there as well. And it also had a, um, a multi-purpose room in that area. Um, and then because of our off, uh, the office would be need to be moved, there was an office space added into that addition there as well. So the family changing rooms would be in the current lobby. We'd have the Simons men's locker room would stay, the Simons women locker room would stay, and then there's actually the campus gymnasium has a men's and women's locker room as well as two coaches locker rooms as well too. So. Any other questions? Okay, Tracy, we're gonna be discussing all of these options and uh, we just, I want the committee just to hear from you so thank you for coming and I'm sure you're busy and <laughs> we're going to be moving on then. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Um, Marty, we talked about the economic impact and it was asked if you had presented that to the red board or if you would, uh, the, I gave you the economic impact papers, the campus, no, the campus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate that, if you would. Okay, um, I think we're going to, as I said, we're going to skip uh, seven and nine right now and go right in, Michael. And Michael, I would like to be done close to two o'clock because we're gonna leave, lose some people at 2.45 to go into closed session at two, okay? Right, so I'm going to be submitting or passing around hard copy here of a, a draft proposal. Yeah. <clears throat> So the, the document that's passing around has been uh, a long time in the making, and it compose, it's composed of the ideas uh, from a variety of people, basically university leadership and local government leadership, so county leadership, as well as city leadership. And so kind of acknowledging those that have been... Um, just, acknowledges, just acknowledge those folks uh, as we kick off here. So... As you're aware, there's eight buildings that comprise the campus at this point in time. Classroom building, Millville Hall, East Hall, uh, the, the physical education building, science building, uh, Wallace Student Center with Copper Top Theater, and the Miller Memorial Library. And then there's a storage building that's uh, kind of up behind the, the Simons Recreation Center a little bit. Those are the main buildings that comprise the campus at this time, as well as a, a field space, basketball courts, uh, tennis courts, and so forth. So um, again, we've been working 
uh, campus leadership as well as university leadership and local government officials have been working for several months now kind of evaluating we've evaluated how the university is currently using the building space and I gave you a report on that several months ago and and so that we've had some discussions on well how could we when looking at campus how can we best use the campus facilities keeping in mind we want the campus to be vibrant we want to increase the vibrancy and and the number of people that are on campus. Uh, we also want to look at your resolution uh, for what would this look like if it was off tax levy uh, by 20, January of 2025, and just basically looking at what is the most efficient use of the campus. And I think the main thing that uh, boiled down out of our discussions was partnership. Um, this probably isn't a very good analogy, but kind of like a mall from the standpoint of we have a variety of businesses and users that would uh, manage the spaces on campus and get more people onto the campus. And how do we use the, again the space most efficiently? So as now you've had time to kind of start to skim through this, I'm just going to go right to where the classroom building is at. The um, the basic footprint that we can see going forward that works really well for a population of students that range from what we currently have right now at 64 to as many as up to 150 or even maybe 180, what buildings would we need to be able to operate with those kind of student numbers? Um, classroom building, Millville Hall, and the science building are three key buildings that uh, really need to remain in the campus footprint. That's where our office buildings are at, and that's where the um, that's where the majority of the classroom activity, class activity, is happening. So, looking at the classroom building, that building itself has seven classrooms, has a capacity of around 240 students at one given time during the day. Uh, it's primarily, it is used for classrooms right now. Um, we use it for English classes. We use it for some of the history classes and art classes. This semester, though, it's only used for an art class, and the Rotary holds its meetings there monthly uh, in one of the rooms in the classroom building as well. So the proposal outlines here that that would stay within the campus footprint and would remain in the lease with the UW system. Melville Hall and East Hall, again, these are primarily office spaces with some classroom space um, and extension resides primarily in East Hall. So Melville Hall, since that's really our main administrative space, would be something that uh, we would want to stay within the campus footprint and the lease of the Board of Regents. However, with East Hall, um, we could go back to the future uh, prior to 2012 or 2010, I should say, when uh, extension was previously located in uh, in the Melville Hall. Uh, we do have at least 12 offices that are either vacant or seldom used that should be able to, um, at least for office space, be able to suit uh, meet the needs of what extension would have. Uh, I think the main challenge we would look at uh, is the food service program, as we have discussed before. Uh, the Melville Hall footprint itself, without modification, uh, may not lend itself well to that program. It would need some modification to be able to, extension to be able to have the resources to run their food program. So the proposal here outlines that the Melville Hall will stay within the campus footprint, uh, possibly looking at East Hall extension, moving from East Hall to Melville Hall, and then East Hall would be returned to the county for use as it designates it being, as it being used. Of course, with the East Hall has a nice parking space there. Uh, right along the building has really good access, so that's a, a nice site, uh, a nice a nice site for uh, any activity to occur. Uh, science building, with that being the with the newer addition there to the campus and housing our chemistry, biology, physics, and geology programs, um, and some office space for faculty is as well. Uh, would propose uh, we outline the out proposal outlines that the east that science building would stay within the campus footprint as well. Going on to the page two, the physical education building, that would contain the, gym, the gymnasium as well as the uh, our shop and maintenance facility. Um, so about two thirds of the physical education building is the gymnasium, men's and women's locker rooms. Uh, about a third of it is shop and storage that we use and extension also, I found out this morning, extension also use some of that storage space up above the shop as well. 
Um, proposal outlines that, um, as Tracy had mentioned, that another entity could manage that space. So proposal outlines that the uh, physical education building would go back to the county. Uh, it could then be used by Simons. It could be used by another entity that would uh, see that space as being valuable. Um, I think of all the people that were at the table, if we all agreed that it was in the best interest of the local community for another entity to manage the gymnasium, um, gets more activity there, as Tracy had mentioned, or more of uh, activities there for use of the bas the gym for basketball or volleyball or yoga or other classes. We would hope that um, we would be able to formulate a memorandum of understanding with the new managing entity that we would still be able to offer our physical education courses there uh, in the gym. So working together, much like we already work with Simons when we use the pool or other other aspects of the current Simons Recreational Facility uh, for classroom activity. Um, next one is the library, Miller Memorial Library. Again, that uh, off, uh, has our the, currently has the campus book and document collection, uh, a classroom, staff offices, a textbook center, as well as our tutoring services. Uh, proposal outlines that that could be returned to the county for use by another entity as well. Um, again, with the, the hope would be that, I guess the thought is a library is a library, libraries are libraries, um, and that the, we could work collaboratively together with the new managing entity. So if a student, if students needed a, a, a quiet place to study or whatever, we would hope that there would still be spaces there available for that type of an activity to happen. Uh, but of course, that would be up to the, up to the um, managing entity on if that's a possibility or not. Textbook Center, we can relocate to another place that would remain in the campus footprint. Um, and so that, I don't really see that as a problem. Um, but so then returning the library to the campus footprint or being to the, uh, to the county for use by another entity is also a possibility there. Uh, the Wallace Student Center and the Copper Top Theater. Um, this is probably the, I will say probably the hardest thing to think about when you look at uh, um, and how do we look at best managing the facility? You know, we do have a, a community play that happens that students are involved in, but most primarily members of the community happens there every semester. Um, half of that building is the student center and of course the food service is there as well. Certainly open to the, the discussions about who would be the best manager of this facility to increase activity there. Uh, the, the cafeteria area has a seating capacity right now as it is as a, of 150 people. So it's a great meeting space. I think it's underutilized though. Uh, and we do still, we do have students that go in there to play ping pong or various games or use that as a, a meeting space as well. So um, I guess I'll, I'll just leave it at, there is a possibility of entertaining a possibility of moving that out of the footprint as we've discussed, but probably haven't seen as many groups come forward with interest in that space as well. So I think there's a lot of discussion that can still happen with the theater and the student center. Um, storage building right now, that's been half of that storage building is where we put our off season equipment. So lawnmowers and stuff go there in the winter time. Um, some of the winter equipment would go there in the summertime. And then of course, the other half of that building has been used by storage by the theaters the theater group. So we would need to figure out what would happen with that building. But recommendation at this point in time in the proposals that it would remain within the lease with the campus if possible and UW system. Takes us to campus grounds. Uh, when we look at the area that uh, make up the grounds of campus, um, again, we have the about 100 acres that is north of the campus footprint, building footprint that is uh, wooded area with a trail that campus uses for classes as well as members of the community use uh, frequently. And then there's the, the agricultural and the tillable. I believe the tillable is right around 28 acres or maybe a little more than 28 acres. That's rented out to a local farmer. I know Sean, you've asked about the agreement with that. We've not been able to find it. Um, so I hope, I don't know if there's a copy with that at the, at the county. But they, right now the campus has not been able to find a copy that I contacted Barb Wentz. She said it would be, it was in her office the day she left. 
uh, and retired, uh, but there's been several people that have gone through that office before my time. So I've not, I've looked at my office and have not found a physical copy of that either. So we can continue to look. I think right now the next option there is just to have a talk with the, the tenant uh, about that agreement and see if the tenant has a copy as well. But um, fairly, certainly would think that that would be open, that in the wooded area would certainly be open to return from the county. Uh, when I look at the master plan, from the colleges from 2013, 2014 time period, it really it, there was no specified use of ever expanding in that land in that ma in that master plan. So, I would certainly think that that would be open to negotiation to be removed from the lease as well. Uh, getting into the last page, <clears throat> as far as other grounds, at least soccer field, tennis courts, outdoor basketball courts. Uh, there's been several discussions about that. Uh, we do use some of that for classes. Uh, the soccer field, though, its most active use has been by the high school and middle school for practices in the fall, and the Eagle School used it in the spring. Uh, we've simply mowed it and provided uh, goals for that. We've not used it for classes or anything that I have seen any time recently. Uh, the tennis courts uh, can be used as ha ha part of our racket sports curriculum. Um, that, unfortunately, that course was canceled this fall. We didn't have any enrollment in it this fall. So I would certainly think that the use of the basketball courts and the tennis courts, uh, if there is a, another entity that takes over the gymnasium, it seems like it could be logical for that entity to also manage those spaces as well. So the, I have, um, we delivered this, had a discussion on this with uh, campus faculty and staff uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, or two weeks ago, open discussion with that. I know there's, they still have, they're still reviewing the document and uh, we'll have some follow up. We were going to have a follow up meeting with our collegium uh, here this, this afternoon. We ran out of time before we got to this part. So we will be having further discussions as well with faculty and staff. But this has been uh, delivered to faculty and staff at the Richland campus. I will conclude there and open up with a transfer the floor back to the chair. Okay, I think we'll have more detailed discussion on in the closed session, but do you have any questions of, for Michael right now that you didn't understand in something that he, yeah. That's it's, that's not on your report, right? The school district, yeah. The, the Excuse me, but I don't think that's to be discussed. It's not on the report. No, we're not going to discuss that now. Okay. So much for my question. Yeah. Right okay. The Sorry. School district it wasn't is... supposed to be on there. <clears throat> Uh, the school district is, they, they, the last two years have called and asked if they could use it for practices for volleyball or whatever. And, and so we've, we've let, we've had them come in and allow them to freely use the gymnasium for those purposes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Do we want to approve your um, expenditures this month, Michael? Do you have any, any, do you have any, anything that we should approve to spend? Oh, um, yeah, I sent those, sent those yeah. documents to you last week, I think, to call them up. I think there was, wasn't much. No, there wasn't. To the right folder here. I think there was only one thing that I can remember. Hopefully you have them on your folders. So what I see for invoices that came through was one for looks like three forty two twelve. That was for like five. That was for inspection, fire and safety equipment. Looks like it was.
Well, I think we have it in our folder. Yeah, I'm just trying to call up everything. Scan to me comes in a different. Uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. while he's looking, I, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Compton and the University of Wisconsin Platteville for finally giving us an answer and a realistic appraisal of their needs. So, thank you. Looks like like I'm missing a page. What I can see from the scan. Oh, the original, there was only a few things. Yeah, I only see two things. Yeah. One's for 342.12. It's for a little over $10, I believe, is for filters. One for 342.12, 342.14, and the other is for 1091. So the sum of those would be what? what we have going forward then. Right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion approved to pay the expenses. Is there anything that you wanted to report before we go into closed session, Mike? Yes, one of the building report. Yeah. Uh, you should have a copy of the building report. Um, there is an important update there. So um, we, I have gone ahead and working with precision control, working on the copper top building and the gymnasium items. So that would be the, uh, the pumps, the pump mm -hmm. in the copper top, the, and the heat pump in the gymnasium, as well as the circulation fan. So, we had gone past the bids. The bids, previous bids expired because it, we, it took oh, yeah. a long time to get through here. Um, and so those have gone up a little bit. So I, I approved going ahead with those three repairs because it fell within the $25,000 that you guys approved at the last meeting. Um, so what basically what happens is right now with that, that approval that you did last month, we don't have the funds to do the drinking fountain. So we thought we would just let that slide until after the calendar turns to 2023. Mm -hmm. So right now we're concentrating on the, the pump and the copper top for the backup boiler, the uh, exhaust fan in the gymnasium and the, um, and the pump in for the heat pump for the, uh, the uh, gymnasium building. Good, and I know it's hard to balance it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's good. I when I talked with Jim this morning, he said they, right now they've got the exhaust fan taken apart. He said that took a lot less time than what they expect. They figured it, they had calculated over ten hours to take it apart, and it took them a three a three and a half. So the hope is that that will come in a little underestimate, keeping our fingers crossed. And the the precision hopes to have the parts again within the next within the next month. So I don't know if I'll have bills for you next month for this, but hopefully that's we'll get that far. Okay, any questions for Dr. Compton? Okay, I would like to move to 13. Um, we can go into closed session when it has to do with anything with the campus buildings. So I would like a motion to go into closed session with having a short presentation by uh, two people and having Carrie Keller and Michael Compton stay for the presentation and everyone else is will just be um, Marty Brewer, Clinton Langrick, our counselor Mike Lindell and the committee um, and then after the presentation the committee will meet to have a discussion. Does everybody understand that? Yes. You want to read that, Michael? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, so we're is this working? It's hard for me to tell. Okay. Uh, for the exemption, we're looking at Wisconsin Statute 19.85, sub 1, sub E, which is deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing in public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. 
Yeah, how to? My yes, the the sale function is also part of the purchase function. I just want to make sure. Yeah. It was specific. Yeah. 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 Okay. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? Okay. Sean Murphy Lopez moves. Do I have a second? Second. Chad Cosgrove seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, I just want to say that we'll be calling Barb Boyce on the phone because she's the only one that uh, we didn't set this up ahead. So, okay, anyone? Do a roll call. Barb Boyce, can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I couldn't hear Adam at all. I'm sorry. All right. We're going into, we are, we're doing a roll call for going into closed session. Yes or no? Okay. Yes. You, you can't hear you at all. You, you can't hear you at all. Yes. Yes. Did you get Cosgrove? Yes. Okay. All right. Motion carries. Okay. We're. Number 9A. Uh, we don't have, if you're going to leave, we're going to have to do that one. Too. Uh, I get the rest of my piles here. <laughs> we had a list of the dedicated recruiter, and we'll have to just talk about it at the next meeting. Uh, the answers from Tammy Abedovich. So, presently, right now, we have. Um, on the agenda about a resolution, and uh, I have a paper copy of it for you. If you want to read it. So, uh, nothing is excited. Okay, um, so Sean, would you like to pose? What did you have here? Sure, yeah. So, yeah, so item number seven is being postponed for the next month. Wait, yeah. I gotta get back to uh, my agenda for you. I'm sorry, but I've lost. Yes, item number seven will be the next month. So, Madam Chair, uh, I really need a. Uh, John, can you use your bike, please? Okay, so, Madam Chair, um, I read through the document um, about what a dedicated. <laughs> about what a dedicated recruiter could do. Uh, for our campus, returning a dedicated recruiter. Um, it's kind of like a job description. And so I thought. I'm not really hearing any action that I, I read uh, interim chancellor of response in the original observer a couple of weeks ago, um, basically just describing the current situation of having a recruiter recruit for all three campuses at the same. 
time. And so I'm not really seeing any progress being made on our resolution that was passed in August that we, we wanted to explore uh, with the UW system returning a ded dedicated recruiter to our campus. So what I did is I just took a bunch of things that different people have produced and, and shared um, and I drafted a resolution. Um, basically, I think we just need to make it more public about the reasoning why we think we need a full-time recruiter back at our campus. So that's the intent of the resolution. Um, I pulled the data uh, that Mr. Compton gave us at the last meeting showing that our student enrollment had dropped from 571 in the 2014 to 15 school year down to 64 for the current school year. And then also I did an open, I uh, submitted an open records request to Paul Erickson. He's the chief communications person for the UW Platteville campus. And he got the data. I think some people are asking for this, this budget data on what, what are they spending here on our campus. So it's gone from 3.1 million in 2012, 2013, down to 1.4 million in the current school year. And then you can see that enrollment data there too. Uh, there's a few interpretive notes and there's a little asterisk right after the chart. And if you go to the end of the draft resolution, you can see those notes from Mr. Erickson. And then I also figured out what would the annual budget be if the state of Wisconsin had kept pace with inflation since 2012, that would be 4 million today. So on the second page, you can see a chart that shows what the inflationary budget would be versus what the actual budget is. Uh, the economic impact reports that was in our packet. So I wrapped that in, uh, there's an annual $7 million direct impact on the Richland County economy. I'm sure it's not there today with our student enrollment where it is today, but that's, you know, obviously what we need to get it back up to. And then just a little history on how the people of this county worked for this campus, paid for it. We know what the cost was originally to get the farmland and of course all the building costs. And I mentioned that it's a number one priority for our campus to have a recruiter so that we can get students back, so that we can get the faculty back, so we can get the extracurricular activities back, so we can get the housing back, all, all the economic activity. Um, and then at the very bottom, I, I just listed out uh, several people to send this to. So we've got all those folks listed out. I'm assuming the regents that you suggested, Madam Chair, are the two that were here recently. So that's that's my suggestion. I'm, I'm thinking because we're not gonna fulfill that part of the resolution by the time we the referendum committee makes some recommendations, we need to get back in front of the county board saying, we know we didn't accomplish this recruiter piece with the UW system, but we're making strides and we need your, we need your help. We need you to get behind this so that we can we can take this to people at the uh, Board of Regents and see if they can help us if, if Platteville can't. So I'd like to just make a motion that we um, forward this resolution to the County Board at the December meeting. Do I have a second to that motion? Okay. We have a motion, first and second. Do we have any discussion? County board. And I would just like to say something. I talked to, um, um, I just blanked out on her name right now. Her last name is Eau Claire. I just, I had a long talk with her. She's sort of uh, the Michael Compton at Marinette. And um, there's a lot of similarities about how uh, you've been explaining that education is different now and that they have that same thing with Green Bay and, and Marinette. Um, however, she is full time at Marinette as administrator and then she also does fundraising um, and that they do have a dedicated recruiter at Marinette and they are one of the, the Green Bay is one of the campuses the branch campuses that are associated with Green Bay have gone up in enrollment. So that would just be, they also, you know, haven't had athletics and different things that we were wishing that we had, but they have the same situation in a lot of those ways. But they do, and they had, she gave me, I have 10, ten pages of ideas of what 
and they also have CE on campus and coming in, I mean, at Platteville doing lots of things on campus. So I just wanted to let you know that. Any discussion about this resolution? Oh, so she's always got ideas. <laughs> I, I am trying to stay neutral these days. <laughs> okay, do are we ready for a vote? Yes. Do we need a roll call vote on a resolution? Okay, all in Barb, are you on? I'm on. Okay. Do you understand? So do you need to have this resolution read to you? No, I heard it. Okay. It is on your I have, I you have have it. It in your packet. Okay. All in favor of passing this resolution onto the county board signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay, we no longer have a quorum. Um, Michael, I think uh, we'll be discussing all this at, at a later meeting, your proposal and all those things. They're not going to be taking place right away as, you know, um, so, um, I would like a motion, I guess, to adjourn because we don't have no, a point. Can't. Yeah, I can't do yeah. it. <laughs> so we are adjourned. <laughs> I appreciate everyone coming. I'm sorry that you had to do it in the middle, but we were trying to accommodate different schedules and, um, some people have children they have to pick up and things like that.